Capital Hoops. Today, I am have the pleasure of talking to Bryant assistant coach Chris Cole, formerly head coach of Clinton Christian and Rock Creek Christian. Uh, coach Cole, I, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, you know, I, I, I talk to you periodically throughout the year, but it's really cool to catch up and, and see you uh, through this screen here. And I'm just, I'm eager to hear what your life has been like, you know, over the last two years since, since you departed Rock Creek. Dude, man, I appreciate you having me, first of all, man. It's always good catching up with you, man. Um, two years in, man, uh, you know, I loved it at, at Rock Creek, but uh, decided to take another challenge on. And we're two years in. We got a program um, that's kind of on the uprise. So I'm happy to be a part of that. I'm, I think I'm working for one of the best coaches in the country. Uh, I think that's starting to, to become prevalent. So we... Our first year, we were the only school to triple our win total because we took over a program. When I first got there, we took over a program that was three and 28. You know, they had some good guys on their team and everything, but the, you know, the program was kind of run a little differently and all that. So we took over a program three and 28. Our first year, we won 10 games. We thought we should, we uh, threw away a couple, thought we should have won more. This past year, we won 15 games and, you know, that, that's almost five times as much as when we took over. So we're on the uprise, man. And we think we got a couple of good guys coming in that can help us uh, push us over the hump, man, to get that NEC title. So I want to, I want to rewind to when you took the job, tell me like, how, how did that transpire? I mean, obviously you, you're, you're in the basketball world through and through and you have tons of connections and you know, tons of people, but how did that, like, how did that come about? You, how did that come about? You were approached and you applied for it or you interviewed? Like, how did everything kind of come together? Well, I had been thinking about it for a couple of years and I've turned down some stuff because um, everybody knows I'm a little bit of softy when it comes to the kids and all that. So I, um, I kind of navigated my way to make sure that I didn't leave anybody behind. So I made sure most of my guys that were at Rock Creek at the time were seniors. And I didn't, I didn't recruit as much um, as I would have in the past. So the only kids I ended up leaving behind was Kyle Rose, who ended up going to Roosevelt yeah. and all that. And then um, there was another kid, you know, I don't think we're allowed to mention uh, recruits names and stuff like that, but there was another kid that we ended up putting them in in a, a, a better situation so um I only had left two behind but uh to start it off man I hadn't been talking to coach uh Jared Grosso for a while he actually was my his first job was at Hartford University during my freshman year okay so he ended up his first full-time coaching job was at Hartford University playing for Larry Harrison who's now at West Virginia okay so um <laughs> He ended up, I always kept in touch with Coach Harrison, always kept in touch with uh, Coach Grasso. They, he was over at Iona where they won five uh, tournament. They went to the tournament five times out of seven. Wow. You know, he recruited 30 pros and all that. So he was a good connect for me to have just to learn from. So I always bounced ideas off of him and all that. And then when he ended up getting the job at Bryant, uh, Coach Harrison reached out to me and said, if I'm a if I'm ready to contact Coach Grasso, I contact Coach Grasso. And then uh, it kind of, we already had a relationship, you right. know what I mean? Because he coached me his first year. So it's just ironic that his first job was coaching me. Now his first head job is my first assistant job. And it's, comes, full, comes full circle. Yeah, it? college world kind of works like that, man. But so it's a blessing. Tell, tell me about your day to day duties both during the season and in the off season I want people I want people to understand all that goes in to you know to doing what you do because it's obviously a lot different than when you were a high school coach right right um well what I what I'm usually in charge of is I do all the player development stuff um you know that's kind of my be background with some of the stuff so I do a, a lot of player development stuff um whether what, is, what does that what does that mean exactly well, that's working out guys for individuals. That's um, doing our 20, because we, uh, in our program, we put an emphasis on player development. So if we have a two hour practice, 45 minutes of it may be player development. So I'd make sure 
I take care of all that stuff on the court, but not only on the court, that's all. We got all the stuff um, as far as film and everything like that. Along with classes, you got to make sure your guys are. Uh, our coach, he wants to treat us like we're head coaches. So he gives us room to kind of do almost everything. So it's not like one person is in charge of this or that, except for the player development phase. So we all get about three or four kids that we're in charge of their academics and kind of their daily routines and lives and stuff like that. So you make sure we do that. And then we all got to chip in uh, as far as game planning is taken care of. So during the season, we all got a certain amount of scouting reports that, you know, he navigates who, who does what, and, uh, you know, I'm involved in that as well. But man. So when, it, when it comes to scouting reports, are you in charge of, like, for every report you do the defense and so-and-so does the offense? Or is it just like you take a third of the games, he takes a third of the games, someone else takes a third of the games? Yeah, it's just like that. You take a third and uh, I'll take a third, he takes third, he takes third. But um, if Phil Martelli needs help with something and he asks me, then I need to get it done. Same thing with me. Like, I – you know, I was new to all this, so I, I love it and everything, but it's it was a new experience to me. So I had to lean heavily on um, Phil Martelli and Brock Erickson, who were uh, the two assistants with me. They've been in the game for a while, and, you know, Phil has done a terrific job. Brock has moved on, but he did a terrific job, man. But I, I learned a ton from them, <laughs> whether it's yeah. game planning or just the daily activities of the job, man. I learned a ton from them. Yeah, tell me, tell me about everything you're able to soak up. I mean, I know you're you're a hungry guy. Um, <laughs> I mean, dealing with someone like Martelli, who's been in the game forever and ever and ever, and to be able to work with him every day and pick his brain and learn about different tendencies. I mean, what how like how how enjoyable is that for you? Man, it, it actually like like it, they always tell you to try to find something you know as your job that you love. I can't picture doing anything else, man. I love what I do. So, and being around Telly, man, tell, Telly's the best, man, when it comes to game planning, when it comes to X's and O's, he, he, he's really good. And then uh, on the administrative side. So what I do is kind of, he's an intense guy. So I I watch, I ask questions here and there, but I kind of watch what he does, you know, so I can better my game and all of that. But nah, man, like I said, our, our staff is phenomenal, man. I, I'm blessed to be, working for a coach. Like I said, I can't exaggerate it. Like I think personally, like if I wasn't working for him and I knew what I know now, I think he's one of the best young coaches in the country. And then to have Telly, you know, we got on our staff, Telly, of course, his father's Phil Martelly, but he spent time in the G League. Like he knows, like he, he's one of the most professional guys that I've been around. And then our director of ops, Eamon Marr, came from the Hoop Group channel. You know, so he has all these connections and stuff like that. He's been able to help our program in a tremendous way, man. I just think, you know, not being cocky or anything, because I definitely respect other other people, but where I am and what I'm working for, I think it can't get any better, man. So I want tell me about the challenges that, that you face. Obviously, you don't coach a top 25 team. You're not getting the five-star recruits. I mean, your job has to be a little challenging because a lot of players that you get probably hope that they're going to go higher. Right. And it just, it, it, I'm sure it presents additional challenges that maybe higher tier teams don't, you know, don't have to deal with. Talk to me about that. Well, it's funny you said that because I know I harped on our staff, but our staff, everybody on our staff has a chip on their shoulder. So we're kind of, we're kind of relishing that, you know, of turning a program around and building a family-like atmosphere with the kids who have a chip on their shoulder and all that. Um, but you got to remember, I was at Clinton Christian where they didn't have a basketball program. Right. So yeah. I was in the DMV where you got all the top schools. It's the best high school basketball in the country where they didn't have a basketball team. And, you know, we ended up winning what, three championships in five years, being in the state playoffs almost every, I mean, the state championship almost every year, four all met guys out of five years. Like, I mean, that's the kind of stuff I like and I relish. So it, it's a challenge, I would say that, you know, in the recruiting circles maybe and all that, but what you have to do is start winning. And that's what we've done. Like we've, like I told you, we go our first year, we win 10 games after they won three and then, 
We win 15 games the next year. We end up playing Maryland, almost tied with them with 10 minutes to go. We end up losing at the buzzer to Rutgers. We end up beating Fordham. Like, these are things that kind of move your program along, and then you end up getting recruits that you kind of covet, and they start to see the progress and how it's going. And this is how special things starts, man. Uh, and we've been able to do that. We've been able to upgrade our talent, and we're – ultra excited man we just had a zoom meeting the other day with the team like everybody is ultra excited man to shock the world man because we're coming when when was the fordham game that was this past season or the season before yeah no this this was this past season actually our first year that we took over we ended up being tied with one minute left to iowa who was top 25 in the country and that's just a testament to coach like he really coaches butt off man you know you look at the talent gap and you you would assume that we shouldn't be in that game, but no, nah, we, we beat Fordham this year. And then, so, uh, so Kyle Rose plays for Fordham. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you coached against Kyle Rose and you beat him. Tell yeah. Me, uh, tell, that's pretty cool. Tell me about oh, that. Oh, tell him about that. Yeah. I tell him about that every time I see him. I take it. Yeah, easy. Tell, me, tell me about that. What was it like coaching against yeah. him and knowing his tendencies and just being yeah, able you know, to be on the same court against him? You know, what's funny though. And uh, it's funny about knowing his tendencies and everything like that. So, I, I'm looking, you know, because, of course, man, Kyle was with me since ninth grade, and I'm looking, and I, you know, I love the kid. I'm looking at and layup lines, and I can't find him. <laughs> Where is this kid at? Like, and you know, just dap him up real quick before the game. I forgot the kid grew two inches. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking like he grew two inches. His body gets all big. So I'm looking at him like, okay, man, the kid. <laughs> and was it, did he play a lot in that game? Because I know his playing time wavered a little bit, right? Yeah, he played. Um, he played a, a little bit in that that game. Um, he played. I think maybe fifteen minutes or something like okay. that. So he came in, and I actually, you know, had a bad call. I told one of the guys guarding him something bad, and he ended up um, <laughs> producing off of my <laughs> my knowledge of his game. So right, right. You know, th- those things were good, man. I was able to play against another one of my. And I don't want to keep mentioning guys' names, but another one of my players my first year was actually my – we ended up playing Rhode Island my very first game uh, of college. So those things, man, are special, man, because you build relationships with those kids and their parents and everything, man. And those those type things, man, you can't make up, man, in storybook. Tell me about the – the what what's going on with you with recruiting in relation to COVID-19. I mean, it has to be obviously unprecedented times, but for you – when your job right now is to be out there landing kids, getting commitments, right. making relationships, following up on those relationships. And then you got to do everything, I guess, by phone or by Zoom or by FaceTime right. or whatever. Like, right. tell, tell me about kind of your day-to-day life over the last month. Well, if anybody knows uh, Jared Grasso, Coach Jared Grasso, they knows we're still working, man. We're on the phone all day, every day. We're in coaching meetings uh, through Zoom three, four, five times a day. We're keeping in contact with each other. Uh, we got our board up of, you know, guys that we want to attack and this, that, and this, uh, if we don't get to this guy, like, we're working, man. I literally, you know, I hear about, I've been trying to catch up on all these Netflix stuff that I keep hearing about in Ozark, but I can't watch any TV, man, because people know me. When I get on the phone, I got to walk around. So I'll get on the phone, walk around, talk on the phone for an hour, come back in the house, my phone rings, I'm back outside. Next thing you know, Coach wants us on a Zoom meeting. So, no, we're attacking this like we were just in the office, man. We have, like I said, we everybody on our staff, including our kids, uh, have something to prove, and we're trying to make sure that we take the biggest step this next year. And we, we're really – I mean, we're really excited about um, Brian basketball going forward. Do you find that the the potent the targets that you're talking to, the potential players that you're trying to get, are they more receptive to talking right now because they have so much more time and they're, you know, they're sitting around the house and during the normal course of the year, they're busy, they're playing basketball, they're doing all this stuff. Do you have like more interaction time with them because of the time or? Well, I don't know if it's that because, you know, kid, kids are kids, man. They don't have to pick up the phone if they don't want to. Right. And they, they, you know, they have plenty of time to do other stuff, whether it's play video games or anything. So I don't think that time of them being at home 
is the difference. I think we've been able to have kids be more receptive to the way we're doing things, whether it's how we built relationships before COVID-19 or um, how we're attack, attack and recruiting. Like we just, I think we've done a good job. And the fact that we have progressed every year and our name starts to go on ESPN and stuff like that, people start to see Bryant more. Because when I first got the job, nobody knew what Bryant was. Uh, and Coach Grasso and everybody involved, man, has done a terrific job kind of building the brand. And then um, when you build a brand, you have to have production behind that. So cool. now we're winning games and we're sticking in with high major power five conferences. That, I think, makes kids more receptive because they see the production that we're, you know, our work is creating. Good stuff, man. Well, Thank you for joining me. Is there, is there anything else? Anything uh, you got? Any messages for the DMV? You guys, yeah. you guys, you guys coming in town next year to play uh, play any teams in town? Um, it's out. well, I think this one's out. I think we're we're coming up to play George Mason. I think that one's out. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was on Twitter the other day. So we'll be out and play them. Everybody, you know, come out and. So the full schedule. Your full schedule isn't released yet. No, our full schedule is not released. Uh, we're still when, working on. When does that happen? When does that happen? Uh, actually, Coach Telly Martelli takes care of that, so okay. I don't know. He'll make sure we got a pretty good schedule. But yeah, to the DMV, Brian is Brian's out now. Yeah, you you can know who we are now, and let's get it, man. If we if we're if you're somebody we're targeting, let's go be a bulldog. All right. Well, Chris Cole, we greatly appreciate it. It's always good to catch up. Glad you're in. Good spirits, got that smile on your face, and good luck. Uh, good Always. luck with the recruiting, the recruiting battle over these next couple months. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. We're prepared. <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate right. it. Have a good one. All right.